Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are on Tim Stuff YouTube channel. He's got about 1,500 subs. He's got about 17 likes on this video. And the Plasma CU How, of course, we know where he's going with the text. I built my CNC plasma cutter, GRBL, Arduino, and CNC shield parts explained in better detail. Now, I don't have to tell you if you've watched my channel in the last couple weeks, there has been a plethora of guys between JD's Garage and everybody else wanting to build a plasma robot for dirt cheap. And they're all essentially using the same parts. This robot's unique though, because I get asked about it all the time. It's based on an artisan design and it's an arm robot basically. And essentially we've seen this design coming over from China. I was gonna do a video on them and now that we have one right here in front of us, just makes sense to go over this because it covers essentially what they're doing as well. Let's jump right in. 40 by 20 extruded aluminum that the base mounts to and it mounts this metal frame to stiffen it. <laughs> and a carriage sits on top of that and I've got a carriage that runs across and then the arm actually runs back and forth which is another piece of 20 by 40. So again guys let's just briefly sum up what we're looking at. Here's the arm right here that's holding the torch which mounts right in that green mountain I believe it's 3D printed. Over here is where essentially he's got his x-axis this would be his y-axis and essentially this arm right here would be laid over the piece of metal he plans on cutting. Now in China, they build little more robust units. I'll put one on screen so you can see exactly what we're looking at. And this gentleman feels like he cloned it. And essentially he's got himself a plasma cutting robot like so many guys before him. We all know CNC plasma robots do not need to be built at the same level of strength and rigidity of a router or mill. And that's just the, the truth behind the entire design. There's not a load on this robot like there is when we're dealing with a router or a mill. That being said though, that being said, let's not be ignorant to think that safety comes last. Looking at a robot like this, many of you are shaking your head already, and I've already put on the screen in previous videos, a plasma torch's temperature is literally hotter than the surface of the sun. You are expecting this mechanical machine of a robot, this unit, to hold that torch, hold it reliably while cutting. The thing to keep in mind is things happen. And if they happen, are you going to be able to submit something like this to an insurance company, God forbid something catastrophic happens, and you are then able to be paid? Most insurance companies would look at this and laugh at you. And I'm just telling you the truth. They may not do it to your face, they'll do it behind your back. But if an adjuster comes out and sees a contraption like this, they're gonna look at that and they're going to tell you essentially that you're not going to be covered. Now, if you're okay with that, by all means, just keep that in mind as we go through a video like this, these are the type of robots that are the wet dream for insurance companies because they know that the burden of what just occurred is on the end user. Keep that in mind. It hooks into this carriage. I built this carriage out of a couple pieces of metal that I had laying around that I was able to cut down, mark a template drill, add the... And this is what typically happens. Guys have good intentions in mind. They have leftover parts and they think they can build something with those leftover parts. That's great but build something that's applicable to those leftover parts. Um, wheels and the motors, which we'll get this thing turned around here so you can see the backside of it. So you can see on the backside, we've got cable. I actually have a bunch of cable. I have, I've got this so I can move this. Now, Many of you can see right here, we have a USB port. That's already a no-no. Universal Serial Bus has no place whatsoever in CNC robotics, let alone plasma systems where they generate the largest amount of EMI. You'll see it all over your screen. I've done this in other videos. This is fact. It's interesting, he puts here four conductor shielded wire. Four conductor shielded wire. We'll go into this in greater detail. However, you should always be using double shielded cable. 
The reason we use double shielded cable is it mitigates both forms of EMI, utilizing tin braided copper as a first level shielding, second layer shielding is mylar foil, then we would instigate a shield drain that is properly ground drain. Now, of course, we see this electrical enclosure here, which has a coating on it. We don't know if that coating goes internally, but being it's externally coated, you can rest assured that now he's essentially made that enclosure either non-conductive or extremely high resistance to conduction, which basically makes grounding virtually impossible with that coating on. Keep this in mind, details count. We already see EMI filters here. And when I say EMI filters, I'm referring to ferrites. The thing to keep in mind that a ferrite on a shielded cable that is long is only going to be effective at that certain point that once again he has it mounted here that's not going to do anything on the length of the cable except where it comes in between four to seven inches from that installation point box way off the side because in the beginning i had some problems with some interference Hey guys, jump over to eDealers Direct Automation and check out my eBay store for the components used to make what you see in this video, as well as many others that you may not even realize you need. Of course, I'm always there. If you have questions, message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And of course, I do do custom engineering as well as consultations. Thank you for watching this video and your support. Take care. Did you hear that? The side, because in the beginning I had some problems with some interference. Okay, so he's already admitted to, in the beginning, having problems with interference. We already know that this chassis is structurally not the best for what application he's using. Okay, this is dangerous when it's holding a plasma torch. If he gets interference and that machine, for some reason, stops in one spot, it could do anything. We have to be very careful. And on top of that, when you have interference, the natural instinct most guys do, and I hear this all the time, is, and just as we see here, they'll install ferrite, then they start shielding everything. But the problem is they don't understand what tools they're using. You install a ferrite, where do you install a ferrite? What is the frequency you're using on the ferrite? When you're using shielded cable, are you installing the correct shielded cable, both single shielded mylar foil, or is it double shielded, which is required for robotics use? Is it properly ground drained? Do we have a ground inside of our electronics enclosure, which is required? We see here that the aluminum extrusion he has is anodized. Anodizing is an insulator. If it's insulated metal, it's non-conductive. Therefore, it can't be grounded. So essentially what he's built here is stability problems inside the robot. So you can see on the back side of this, the motors one for cross, one for back and forth. One for cross, one for back and forth. That would be his X axis and one for his Y axis. The X, Y. Then I've got plugs that I've plugged in. One for each of the motor sets. And then I've got a cable here. And this cable, I just have an end on that. Actually, this is the one that fires the plasma cutter. And of course, I've got an on off switch that powers up and turns it on. When you turn it on, it automatically connect to the um, it'll automatically connect to my application on my iPad. So once you have the application up and running, you'll notice that the Bluetooth's not on, but when I turn on this, it automatically connects to the Bluetooth. So now it's actual running and it'll actually work. I can actually drive it. And it's set up to drive from this side of the machine. That's why my pendant works this way. So now many of you like me are asking if he had interference before and he put all these tools on here, are we saying that now the interference is cleared up or are we saying he just hasn't seen it appear again? This is what I ask all of my clients. This is what I ask anyone who has had problems with EMI. EMI will show its face whenever it decides to. Now the problem is once that's built into a machine, you don't know when it's going to show its face again if you do not start at the ground level and go through and mitigate all possibilities of EMI by using best practice. Double shielded cables, proper grounding, no coatings, going through a metal enclosure, no coatings on the enclosure. We can go down that rabbit hole, but the bottom line is this. You must understand there is no eradication of instability 
if we are just installing tools that are supposed to add stability, but we haven't started looking at where all the problems lie. If we have a chassis that's not properly grounded, there's a problem. If we have a coated enclosure that is again housing your electronics and it's not properly grounded, there is a problem. Just because we put band-aids on and you get the bleeding almost stopped doesn't mean that you're going to heal properly. So keep in mind what I'm telling you. This is what these guys promote. They promote, I'm going to fix a problem after a problem happens. I'm not going to instigate best practice or do research because that takes time and I don't want to do that. And I would rather just show you, look at what I built. Okay. The problem is if it's not built correctly, you're just going to have to rebuild it anyways. If you want the proper result, which everybody wants, they just don't want to put the time in to get. Think about what I'm saying. So. Let me take this box apart and I'll show you the inside and show you what's inside it, what makes it run. Let's see that. So this is inside oh the box. My God. I'll show you what I've got. Down here on the bottom, I've got a power supply out of computer. Guys, look at this and take notes. To the five volt. So up here in the top, I have everything that runs to the plugs, but this is the Arduino with the CNC shield on it. Not even mounted. I mean, he literally just pulled the board out without it even being mounted inside the enclosure. I mean, I get asked all the time, are your videos real? I don't know what, the, what else to tell you. I'm filming this and we're watching it together and you just seen it. He pulled the board out without that even being mounted in place. And you can see that it's wired back to the plugs on the back side of the computer or on the back side of the thing. This piece right here is my uh, Bluetooth chip bought this off Amazon. It's probably five or six bucks. Guys, please do yourself a favor. If you don't have the money, save your money. If I did not care about your own money, just think logically. Why would I tell you to save it? Why wouldn't I tell you to go buy something? I'm not telling you none of that. Save your money. Don't piss your money away on contraptions like this. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your time and your time is quantified to something. Think about what I'm saying. We used to have a thing in America where if we needed something or wanted something, and we didn't have the money to afford it at that particular time, we would wait and save for it. That's the best thing to do. Don't waste money. Don't waste time on ideas that turn into science projects. I cannot tell you how many clients have told me, I wish I would have listened to you. I wish I would have just watched one more of your videos, would have looked at it, questioned it, and done more research. I get it all the time. The reason they say that is because this is what is being produced today. We see it all over the place. And again, it's not to degrade people. It's to make people understand that when you put a video out, it's not you just affecting you. It's you affecting the people that watch that video. Some people just don't get that. Thank you for your support. I wish everybody a very safe, blessed, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Take care.